This okay, yeah, this'll be this'll 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 take up some time. Alright. So we're gonna we're gonna go through the Warhammer Fantasy Iceberg. Um I I'm not exactly sure how these this meme works. To my understanding, it's that the higher up it is, like the less crazy and like less obs like the the more well known and less crazy it is and then the further down it is the more obscure and like fucking insane it is it, do i understand that correctly is that is that how the iceberg meme works do i think Vaulton will eventually be offered uh no i don't Personally, I don't. Do I think we'll get Chalkox? Yes, absolutely. All right, so let's check this out. Harold Hammerstorm? I don't see it. I'm so sorry. I, I am not on the Harold Hammerstorm wagon. I'm so sorry. I know so many people. I, I've spoken to a, a, just a significant number of people that love him. Like that was just before my time. So I just don't have any connection to him. And so to me, he's just not important. <laughs> so sorry. All right, let's check this out. So you sent a bigger picture. Why? This is fine. Um, wait, when you say bigger picture, do you mean like, do you mean like there's more on it? Or do you just mean like the actual picture itself is larger? Norska rework next year. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty likely. What legendary Lord Elf are we lacking? Uh, Islin and probably Kara Dryan. Those two will probably be legendary Lords. An actual, oh, a better picture. Okay, hold on. Uh, let's do that. This, this looks the exact same to me. <laughs> Open link. Yeah, whatever. It's fine. Why are you all saying, oh? Do I think we'll see Ingra Death Sword? Um, I could see Ingra Death Sword being referred to and talked about. I do uh, maybe I don't know Ingra Ingra is like one of the few undivided warrior of chaos lords that's left um because there's just not that many undivided characters so potentially what is this mess it's a warhammer iceberg meme all right let's get into it so basically uh I'm going to start at the top and we're going to work our way across the screen uh talking about all of these different theories and I'm going to talk about what I know about them um and if I think they are good or interesting or bad or dumb. So starting at the top, Warhammer is a Warhammer 40K feudal world. All right, that's a pretty popular theory. Uh, I think it's a stupid theory because it doesn't make any sense uh, based on the sense that if they were in the exact same universe, then the demons would be the exact same and the demons are not. Uh, we know that the demons in Warhammer Fantasy are significantly different than the demons in 40K. Also, the fantasy world blew up, and now the universe has focused around the Age of Sigmar, which is even more wild and different. And uh, I just, I just, I just don't see it. <laughs> Plus, the Eight Winds of Magic don't exist in uh, AOS, and they're like a fundamental aspect of reality itself in fantasy in AOS. Like, if you don't have the Eight Winds of Magic, then you can't exist in the fantasy universe. It's a fundamental piece. Um, some of them are the same. Well, not really, because the, the thing is, is that, like, how they, like, came about, um, how their items were made, what they're famous for doing, like, how their personality works. A lot of that stuff is very, very different between the two settings for the same characters. What was the name of the book Solostra showed up in? Uh, she, I don't think it's out yet. I think she's coming out in the, uh, I think she's coming out in the Sea of Claws book. Or the Sea of Chaos. No, is it, I think it's the Sea of Claws. They just released an image of her. 
though she might have come out in the new northern book but i think she's coming out in the upcoming book um dwarfs are scottish and halflings are irish i've actually never heard the halflings are irish theory that seems very very rude to the irish <laughs> there is very, i mean I, I i could absolutely see the um I definitely see what they're saying, and that definitely seems like something Games Workshop would do. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past them. Um, I've not heard the halfling bit. I've um, though. Fun fact: uh, the dwarfs are not actually based on the Scots. Uh, the dwarfs, uh, though, they have that sometimes is like how their accent is portrayed. Um, but the dwarfs are actually specifically based on working class Brits. Fun fact: uh, Malal. I'm actually kind of surprised Malal... Well, I, okay, I guess it makes sense for Malal to be this high up. Um, because Malal, like, he's a fairly well-known uh, entity within, like, Fantasy and 40k. A lot of people talk about him. He doesn't really exist anymore. Um, he, you know, he's kind of from nowhere uh, and does nothing anymore. Um, but... What is Malal... Malal's the god of... Is Malal the Chaos God of Atheism, or is he the Chaos God of Destruction? I forget which one he is. I'm pretty sure he's Atheism, right? I think it's Nakoho who's Destruction. Which we'll get to him. Chaos God of Poor Copyright Management? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, he is Atheism. Like, he's an interesting idea. Um, I, I don't think it's a very well executed idea because it it's kind of one of those like aha it's a it's a it's a what's the word i'm looking for it's a uh, paradox like oh isn't that cool like oh wow woo wibbly wobbly it's a paradox um and i just uh i, I don't think it has that much in and of itself like it, it just doesn't have that much merit in my opinion um because like atheism already is a concept within fantasy but i don't think it's enough of a concept that you would be able to have a chaos god because chaos gods tend to be like a certain level of power like obviously they're not as powerful as the big four but they tend to be like medium level power and the idea that there are enough followers of atheism as a concept um in the world of fantasy uh to create a chaos god just i just don't see it dude i just don't see it um like the only the only atheists in Warhammer Fantasy are vampires, generally generally speaking. Um, it's very very rare to run into atheists outside of vampires. Because I mean, even even Cathayans, like they're not supposed to worship anything, but they do and they do ancestor worship, and many of them worship the dragons, even though they're not really supposed to. Aren't atheists immediately smacked by their god? Well, if you're an atheist, you don't have a god. <laughs> uh, the Libra Chaotica has 40k references. That's 100% true. Um, the Libra Chaotica is a really, really interesting book. If you can ever pick it up, I would highly recommend it. It's an excellent read. It's full of all sorts of fascinating, wonderful stories. It's beautifully written. It's got a lot of like... Um, it's got a lot of like ciphers hidden in it. So there are a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of secret messages written in different ciphers. Um, and of course, a lot of it is written in cursive because fuck you. Um, so it's very, it can be very difficult to read, um, but it's a very large collection of just pure lore. Um, it's a fairly expensive book, especially nowadays, but you can get like some, there's a, there's a beautiful hardback copy that I have. Um, it's, it's wonderful and it's got lots of cool stories in it, but it does actually have a lot of 40k stuff. Um, the funny thing about the Libra Chaotica, though, is that it's written by a fantasy character explicitly. So it's very specifically written by a fantasy author, including the 40K parts. <laughs> so whenever the 40K parts happen, you have this character who has no fucking idea what's going on in 40K writing about it. And it's genuinely hilarious. Because he's trying to like describe everything based on fantasy tropes and fantasy ideas. Um, eventually it'll shift perspective to like a more narrative perspective where it actually just like gets straight to the point and talks about it like factually. But he he has a lot of notes about like he has visions where he sees the 40k universe and it's really funny. 
Um, <laughs> it's super funny. Being atheist in a world where gods actually show their power is just kind of stupid. Well, a lot of wizards are atheists. Um, um, and it's something I will talk about in an upcoming video. Um, but a, many, many wizards do not actively worship the gods because they understand from a scientific perspective that the gods are not... The gods are reflections of sentient life forms in the ether. They are not genuine entities that came from some, like they're not actual gods that came from some godly realm and have existed for all of time and like created the universe and all this other stuff. They're literally just our own psyches reflected in a really fucked up uh, funhouse mirror. Wizards under many wizards understand that. So because of that, they don't pray to gods because they don't see them as genuinely divine creatures. They see them as just these uh, manifestations of magic that have acquired kind of a pseudo sentience, um, but are really just like really weird mockeries and puppets of um, our our own minds. Chaos Dwarfs. Uh, I feel bad for the Chaos Dwarfs that they're included in this. That's not very nice to them. Uh, the Chaos Dwarfs, <laughs> Chaos Dwarfs don't deserve to be on an iceberg meme. Human girls are smarter than Zinch. Bretonia actually has a middle class. <laughs> actually has a middle class. Uh, human girls are smarter than Zinch. That actually sounds like a really stupid meme from the 90s or the early 2000s. I've never heard that meme, but I can absolutely see that meme, uh, especially because Warhammer Fantasy used to be a really hardcore boys game. It was built and designed for teenage boys. Um, the lore was written for teenage boys. The art was done for teenage boys, and it was not subtle. Uh, so that being something that was a common uh, belief or uh, said, it, I does not surprise me in the slightest. Definitely comes off as pretty cringe nowadays, but I could actually see this back in the day. Bretonia actually has a middle class. Hair, that's bullshit. <laughs> Lies. Lies and slander. But no, Bretonia does actually have a middle class of like merchants um, and people that live in the cities. It's not purely peasants and knights. There are actually like servants and uh merchants and stuff uh there is there is a middle class it's just very rarely talked about rc start the story on razor dragon tail good to see you guys do i think egrim von horseman will come to warhammer 3 yes i think egrim von horseman will absolutely be in warhammer 3 well, fantasy battles is the more accurate representation of real warfare from the three so fantasy battles is more accurate than warhammer 40,000 and i don't know what the other three i, I don't know when this was made what, what is the third? What have I just walked into? We're going over uh, a Warhammer Fantasy Iceberg meme. So it's like all the memes of Warhammer Fantasy. AOS. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, I would agree. I would say Warhammer Fantasy is the most re realistic portrayal of warfare um, out of the three games. Because, well, Fantasy had complicated rules. Like a lot of people complained that Fantasy had too many rules because Fantasy was trying its hardest to be realistic despite the unrealistic setting because it's originally based on a historical game. Um, like it was meant to be historical, uh, just with fantasy creatures. So yeah, that's why it's the most accurate representation of real war. Grumbert of the Ancestor, good to see you, welcome to the stream. Old ones in fantasy are the Primarchs. I have never read anything I've hated more in my life. Also, that doesn't make sense because there's definitely more than 20 old ones. Um, yes, also there's a female old one. And they're all, the Primarchs were all boys be, for some fucking weird reason. Um, still don't understand why the Emperor didn't, didn't have a daughter, Primarch, but whatever. Um, the, uh, yeah, no. There was a female old one, Rig. So, nope, debunked. Um, cute theory, but no. Um, dwarves could use magic in the older editions. Technically true, but also technically not true. Dwarves could not use magic in older editions. This, this actually should be written differently. Um, it's that the dwarves had wizards in the older editions. Back in ye olden days, the dwarves had gnomes in their army, and the gnomes were your wizards. Unless in first edition they had a wizard, but in third edition, dwarves could not have wizards, or dwarves were not wizards. They had gnomes who were wizards. I've never heard of a dwarf wizard. Um... No, yeah, and the gnomes are back. The gnomes are back. 
Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition. Um, Rough Days and Hard Nights lets you play a gnome and updated their lore. And the gnomes are really fucking cool. I love the gnomes. Gnome army. There's not enough gnomes left to make an army, to be honest. The gnomes were almost wiped out by Grom the Paunch. There's not very many of them left. I don't think they could ever make an army. Uh, they would most likely, if they ever saw them in Total War Warhammer, they would either be a single unit, like a mercenary unit, or they would be a mercenary, like, shadow wizard that you could recruit. Merveloskis, thanks so much for the Prime sub. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Someone subbing during this is blowing my mind right now. Original Realm of Chaos books. Very old. Very old. Uh, I actually bought one of the old school Chaos books yesterday because I need it for something. Um, for a, a lore video. But yeah, the old school Chaos books were <laughs> very different. Very different. Um, Warhammer started from Games Workshop wanting to sell overstock D and D minis. Uh, I don't. Ah, that actually may be true. I'm not 100 percent sure. I know originally, well, to my understanding, originally they wanted to make a historical game, but they couldn't sell. Like the game wasn't selling because nobody wanted to play his another just historical strategy game. And the original developers of Warhammer. Uh, or Games Workshop saw how popular D&D &D was. So they decided to cash in on D&D &D by stealing the concept of D&D &D just being fantasy and then took their historical strategy game and made it into a fantasy game. Um, granted, it took them a little bit to do that because Warhammer Fantasy 1st and 2nd edition were more like skirmish-based role-playing games. And then 3rd edition was when it actually turned into an army warfare game. Oh, Marvelowski's, thank you for the nice message. I appreciate that. Uh, but that's interesting. Ogres or communists? I feel like this is a really, really, like, like, smooth brain meme. Like, super smooth brain meme. I feel like this is basically just, haha, ogres from East, therefore, ogres communist. Because, like, ogres don't really share, like, I don't know. I, I can't think of anything communist about ogres. They love money. No, ogres are like hardcore capitalists. <laughs> They're hardcore capitalists. Um, yeah, I feel like this is like... I feel like this is just like... Teehee, they're from, they're from the East. And everybody knows Eastern people are communists. They have tyrants. Uh, tyrants is not exclusive to communism. <laughs> um, everything in Games Workshop is stolen ideas. Mostly true. Mostly true. Um, the vast majority of Games Workshop I, uh, Warhammer Fantasy IP is stolen from other settings. Um, and they did not change a lot of the things they stole. Um, they changed very, very, very few of their Lord of the Rings references. They didn't change. They barely changed any of the shit they stole from Moorcock. Um, like they stole his concept of chaos and uh, we actually had gods of order and gods of chaos back in the day, but they got rid of the gods of order. Um, thankfully, uh, but like the chaos gods are flat out stolen from Moorcock. Um, and, uh, the eight pointed star. The eight pointed star of chaos undivided is literally more cock symbol for chaos. They just flat out stole that shit. Uh, never changed it, which is <laughs> just, it is what it is. Um, but I do think they have transformed it into something beautiful, uh, with enough time. Uh, tons of British culture references. Yep. Written by Brits. What are you going to do? Uh, Mithril was, is canon. That is true. Um, Mithril does exist or used to exist in warhammer fantasy uh mithril was almost entirely replaced by ithelmer uh ithelmer is the warhammer fantasy version of mithril um though you do not have to go back that far to find mithril uh mithril existed as recently as sixth edition warhammer fantasy all right on to the rat catcher tier. So all of these, some of these are a little old. Like some of these are a little outdated. Um, but um, a lot of these are really good. 
All right, let's go to the rat catcher tier. War master. Ah, oh, fuck, dude. War master. <laughs> War master. Yeah. So for anyone that doesn't know, War master was a miniature, like a millimeter scale grand war game for Warhammer Fantasy. So it was literally that you would play with these massive armies, but all of your minis were really, really tiny and they were all super ugly because they were so small and it was really, really hard to put any good details on it. But uh, that's actually where we had a playable Araby. Um, Araby was like a full on faction in War Master. Uh, it's where we get our knowledge of like all the Arabian units from. Um, cause that was like the only time they were really big and playful, uh, big and playful when well, they were playable, <laughs> uh, orc cheerleading mini. I don't want to talk about it. Nathan fucking sends that stupid blood bowl gif to me way too often. I hate this thing. <laughs> I hate this thing. Famir. Um, it's, I honestly, I expected Famir to be further down. Uh, Famir, uh, uh Morcock is M O O R C O C K. I believe, if I remember correctly. Who's the strongest caster in the Warhammer universe? Uh, while he was alive, Lord Croak. Unless you're counting gods. It, if you're counting gods, uh, then it's probably Zinch. Um, Famir. So Famir on here. Uh, Famir lore now is very, very good. It's awesome. It's much better. Um, but the old Famir lore used to get a lot of kind of like raised eyebrows because it had a lot of heavily, uh, very heavily implied um uh we'll say sexual assault <laughs> uh was a key concept of their lore um they like to kidnap humans and do things to them and they would awful um the whole like the whole like uh the whole like lots and lots and lots of non-consensual sex used to be a really big aspect of Warhammer Fantasy. It used to be everywhere. And they would talk about it a lot. Dark Elves did it. Beastmen did it. Famir did it. Um, Slanesh did it. And that was it was like all they did. Like it was like, oh, they're so evil. Look how they keep like fucking everybody. And that, that was like all they did. Um, I am so glad they've like, like obviously does that still exist in Warhammer Fantasy? Yes. Is it as key of a concept as it used to be? Not even close. Um, that is, it is so much better now. Um, I'm really glad they cleaned a lot of that up because it was just lazy. You can make people horrific without just like leaning on that as your own thing. Uh, also, the most hilarious thing about the Orc Cheerleader Mini and why I actually think it should be further down, like probably in the Gashnag tier, is because the Orc Cheerleader Mini has Orcs with boobs because they have like, they have, um, they have the, the nipple things that they spin around um the pasties um but if there are orcs with boobs that implies orcs can have sex like they have a sex like male and female and that implies then that orcs can breed which just like completely like just takes the orc lore and flips a table so yeah sigmar is a lost primark very very popular theory um not honestly probably one of i i would have put sigmar is a lost primark and mercenary and i probably would have put Old ones are the Primarchs in Ratcatcher. Uh, I think Sigmar is a lost Primarch is actually not that crazy of a theory. Um, like, I, I don't think it's correct, but like, you know, it's, it, 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 I can understand why people have that up there. <clears throat> half Orcs, those should probably be further down. Uh, half Orcs are super weird. We know they're coming back for Warhammer the Old World, but I'm pretty sure Half Orcs are going to be green skins that are not they're too big to be goblins but too small to be orcs and they're probably going to use the new cruel boys minis uh because the cruel boys literally look like half orcs um but in the old lord they used to be what this kind of implies uh they used to be like half orc half something else um which you know with modern orc lore is very strange araby yeah uh araby was very weirdly designed uh it was kind of obnoxious considering like their most famous character was literally sultan jafar because Jafar from Aladdin and they were like ah oh, Jafar's a cool villain he's now our villain he caused the crusades great job <laughs> they worked really hard on that one dreadfully dreadfully is super awesome but it sold very very poorly so it's really obscure and a lot of people don't know about it which is a shame because it was a lot of fun 
Sigmar is secretly the God Emperor. That's why he's so strong. Uh, no, because Sigmar is a much better person <laughs> than the God Emperor. Uh, how, how dare you? How dare you? Um... <clears throat> Only human factions playable in the old world. Uh, that was a big fear. Um, there, there was a notable fear when the old world was announced that it was just going to be like the Empire and like Bretonia and like just the humans. Like we weren't going to get any of the exciting factions. Uh, Tyranin, thanks so much for the gift sub. I really appreciate that. Fallen Empyrean, uh, be sure to thank him when you get the chance. Uh, that was very nice of you. Thank you. Um... Where was I? Uh, so yeah, that, that was definitely a very big fear. It's been disproven by this point, but it, it was a very understandable fear uh, for a hot minute. Corn doesn't live in his brass fortress because it's just there to intimidate the other three. Uh, I, yeah, the, so the, honestly, what I probably would have changed this to is that Corn does not live in the uh, the brass citadel uh, because he's always out fighting. Like he's there's so many stories about corn literally going out and fighting personally in the wars so like i don't think he's home a lot of the time despite the fact he's always talked about brooding upon his throne atop a you know atop a mountain of skulls like is he though <laughs> is he sitting on his throne because i feel like corn goes out a lot like i feel like he would get bored staying indoors he, he's he's too much of an extrovert he wants to go punch things um Though, you know, we do have that hilarious story of that time he left and then the changeling sealed his door shut from the inside. So Korn had to lay siege to his own house and break his own damn door down just so he can get inside. Bernie Sanders will destroy Warhammer. Yeah, I can see it. Um, <coughs> so many fucking hilarious Bernie Sanders memes. AOS got better looking models to shift players away from 40K. Hilarious. Uh, I mean, AOS has better models. That is true. Can't argue that. Uh, I feel like what this actually is trying to say, though, is AOS has much better models because the AOS designers are actually allowed to do things that are different and interesting, whereas 40K is held hostage by Space Marines. Obscure second and third edition books. Yep. Never, never, ever, ever, never read a second or third edition book. It will literally make your brain blow out the back and not in a good way. All right. Waystalker tier. Warcraft was originally going to be a Warhammer Fantasy game. Yes, um, that is something that comes up a lot because whenever someone sees Warhammer for the first time, they often go, huh, this is kind of looks like, uh, this kind of looks like Warcraft. And then you always have somebody go, did you know that Warcraft was originally supposed to be a Warhammer thing? And then someone else will probably go, that's not true. That's, that's not true. And someone else will go, yeah, it is true. And then like, it always breaks down an argument, but it is true. Um, the original Warcraft game was supposed to be a Warhammer Fantasy game. Um, but things fell, uh, fell through between the two of them and it's evolved a lot. Oh, I forgot the Malekith one. Malekith really summoned Nakari for his perfume technology. I've never heard that. That's weird. Like if, of all the things he, you, someone suggests he could have summoned Nakari for, they go for perfume. Cause like, if you're going to summon the arch tempter and you're a dude encased in a metal suit of armor, with your nerves burned off, so you probably can't feel anything but pain ever again. I can think of something else you might want to like ask an arch tempter about. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, night elves and sea elves. Uh, night elves are a Warcraft thing, not a fantasy thing, though. Uh, you know, I'm sure it gets talked about sometimes. Sea elves are a thing. Sea elves are 100% a thing in Warhammer Fantasy. It, they're not what they sound like. Um, whenever people hear, uh, whenever uh, people hear sea elves, they think, oh, like Ineth Deepkin, like underwater elves. No, 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 no. Sea elves are elves that sp specifically live in the city of Marienburg. Um, they are Ulthwani elves, so high elves, that have immigrated to Marienburg and have either been born there or have lived there for so long that it's like their primary home. They are referred to as sea elves. Um, and when Marienburg uh, has like had books focusing on it, the sea elves were like part of their roster, essentially. Battle Masters. Oh, that rings a bell. Wasn't that the card game? Was Battle Masters the card game for Warhammer Fantasy? Because that, that sounds very familiar. There are more chaos gods than, other than the main four. Yep, that is something that's pretty obscure, not talked about enough, but yes, there are thousands of chaos gods. 
you never hear about a lot of them because most of them are not significant enough but yes there are definitely many 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 chaos gods uh Araloth banged all the goddesses oh this is where Hammond has always got that shit from uh no <laughs> Araloth banged one goddess and she apparently like date raped him or something because he doesn't remember it <laughs> because she was like Araloth I'm pregnant and he was like what how <laughs> when did we what <laughs> Uh, he got Jesus of Nazareth, but, um, yeah, so, but Aerloth, like, we know that, we know that he, like, kissed Lilith at least, and that they spent a lot of time together, but yeah, he has no recollection of anything, like, I think past second base. <laughs> Poor bastard. Slon get old. Heresy. Lies. Slon may be old, but they, they, they are immortal. They are immortal. We've seen this in AOS. All the Slon in AOS are still the OG Slon from Warhammer Fantasy. There have been no new Slon since. Musical references in Warhammer. Uh, the only thing I could think of that this might be referring to, unless it's talking about like, oh, musical references. Oh yeah, they do that a lot. They do that a lot. Um, I mean, they're Brits. What are you, you going to do? Quotals. Uh, Quotals used to be uh, very not well-known and obscure thing before they were added to the game uh for total war warhammer um yeah yeah dlif yeah yeah genevieve genevieve has a ton of musical references i mean it it literally is a musical <laughs> genevieve is basically a play slash musical um they even can make fun of that in uh one of the Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition supplements that actually allows you to meet um, uh, D-Lif and uh, like do some of the Drakenfell's Genevieve stuff. Um, it very obnoxiously points out how much of a play it is and it's, it's goofy. Uh, but yeah, Quotals used to be uh, fairly mysterious and not well known. And uh, they were 100% though, they had fucking serpent heads or dragon heads. I don't know why CA put a fucking bird beak on them. Um, I would add Kotal bird beak and probably put it down another tier because that's the thing now. Kotal's did not have bird beaks. I don't know why CA did that. There has never, ever been a piece of art that shows a Kotal with a bird beak. <laughs> I've seen all of them. It doesn't exist. And the creature it's based on in actual, like, history from our world, uh also did not have a beak. I don't understand why they fucked up a historical monster. I still get angry about that. Ugh, I hate what they've done to the Lizardmen sometimes. They've, they've made so many stupid fucking changes to the way the Lizardmen look. It makes me so salty. Um, orcs, orc spores exist because of beer. Old one beer. Dwarf beer don't matter. I don't, I don't get this one. Are they saying orcs are like hops that have become intelligent? copyright issue you don't have to oh they are <laughs> that's actually super funny Dude, oh my god if it turned out <laughs> if it turned out that the green skins were just sentient hops that would be the funniest fucking thing in the universe i'm not gonna lie no grudges have been settled peacefully that's that's a fun theory but is not true there are many grudges have been settled peacefully um I would the vast majority of grudges between dwarfs are settled peacefully. Balrogs are secretly canon. Yeah, they're called bloodthirsters. Um <laughs> I'm just saying. Um no orc demons because they like a challenge. They spelled demons wrong. Uh Is it saying orcs don't have demons because like they don't fear anything? I mean, I would argue orcs do kind of have a demon. It's called an idol of Gork. An idol of Gork is like, it's basically a demon. It's a manifestation of wah energy that becomes like sentient and runs around just enjoying smashing shit. That's basically a demon. It's just that it has to be given like a physical form. It's essentially a greater demon of Gork and Mork. <laughs> In earlier editions, they were called Balrogs. Oh, no, I believe it. I'm just saying I bet that's what Bloodthirsters were. 
they're now unbreakable as they should be now where's my where's my uh where's my strider on black knights yuri kavalenko is related to yuri barkov i don't remember who these characters are Katarin love triangle with Yuri and Yuri. Ugh. <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, Kaval wait. Um, I can't remember which one is Demon Yuri. What is this iceberg? That so many things are thrown away by Sotek. So icebergs are like popular memes or ideas or concepts that exist in a fan in a fandom. Kovalenko is the one from the trailer. Okay, so Kovalenko is Demon Prince Yuri. Who's Yuri Barkov? Is Yuri Barkov hit the original Yuri? Claw Hand is Kovalenko? Claw Hand? What? Oh, okay, 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 okay. So yeah, Barkov is Daniel. Okay, so Yuri Barkov is Demon Prince. Yuri Kovalenko is the original one. He's the OG one. Okay. Katarina Love Triangle with Yuri and Yuri. <laughs> bro, bro, she already has, poor Katarina already has Kostaltin showing up at her house and she's like, Fornicator, Fornicator, because he's such an old boomer. Uh, Like she does, she doesn't need a Love Triangle, poor girl. Like, She's already had one love interest turn into a demon prince. You know, she doesn't need a second one that's a mutant. Zotes are still canon. Yes, which is wild to me, honestly. Uh, Zotes, fun fact, Zotes are the uh, first original creation that Games Workshop made for themselves. So the first, like, 100% original creature they made, they made it, they didn't steal it from anything, was the Zote. Uh, it's been through a lot of different iterations, but the modern one that we have until World Warhammer, I fucking love. Halfling army list. Uh, please God, no. <laughs> I'm sure it could exist. Please God, no. Mercenaries at best. Native American based cent. Oh, wow. Okay, this one's really interesting. Native American based centaurs. Actually was a thing. Is a thing, I should say. So Games Workshop has said that centaurs are coming back. Um, they they have confirmed already in the old world that centaurs will be returning. Um, and there were essentially two kinds of centaurs in fantasy, but one is super famous. Um, there, there was one that was basically just like a big chaos monster thing, but that's not what they're talking about. They're talking about the old school centaurs. Um, the old school centaurs, there's actually a bit of lore of them uh, on them in the Liber Chaotica for some reason, but the original centaurs were an order race. Um, so they were an order race of, um, and they, yep, they were based on Native American culture. Uh, they lived in Nagarond between, or Nagaroth between the Dark Elves borders and the Lizardmen's borders, and they were a nomadic race that was very powerful in warfare um and like you know we're skilled archers but also combatants uh and i think there's a good chance they're coming back um and hopefully games workshop does a good job with them because i feel like nowadays uh doing stuff based or uh, inspired by native american culture can be a bit of a minefield um so hopefully they're smart about doing that in tow all major factions will be split into smaller sub factions the old world ah uh, that seems possible like I, I i do think there are going to be sub factions just like there are in age of sigmar yes i absolutely agree with this theory i don't think that's that crazy age of sigmar and 40k have both really enjoyed introducing sub factions but it's probably just gonna be part of the same book like you'll probably get it maybe like i could see maybe the empire's ones being a little more different but like I can see you like pick up a Bretonia book and within the Bretonia book, depending on which kingdom you decide to go as your sub faction, you get like different abilities, but they're all going to be in the same book. I think still gnomes and halflings sounds like the same. They're actually quite different. 
Uh, gnomes can grow facial hair and have beards. They're also notably thinner. Uh, and also gnomes are capable of magic. Uh, they have a natural inclination for magic. They're a very magical species, just like elves are. Um, and they have a natural affinity for the lore of Olgu or the lore of shadow. Though there are gnomes out there who have, who use chaos magic. And there are also gnome necromancers. They're rare, but they exist. Um, halflings, on the other hand, are re very resistant to chaos. Halflings also cannot use magic. Um, there's no such thing as a, ha a halfling wizard. On to the Gashnag tier. Dracula is plus Don Quixote eagers the Flesh Eater Courts. Uh, yeah, that's true. Um, so the Flesh Eater Courts are literally a faction of horrible, monstrous ghouls and vampires that believe they're all super noble, wonderful. They believe they're Bretonians. Um, they, they think they're Bretonians. And, uh, you know, Don Quixote was uh, a little insane and thought he was a super badass knight when he was just kind of a crazy old man. Um, Redwall plus capitalism and freedom equals Skaven. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that one. I mean, yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. Skaven are kind of like ultimate late stage capitalism. Um... Shrek plus the state and revolution equals Beast Claw Raiders? Ugh. So Beast Claw Raiders are the all-mounted ogre faction that run around chased by an eternal winter and they just take everything they want and eat everybody and run everybody over. Um, <laughs> that's stupid. Crimson Skies game plus Atlas Shrugged equals Caradron Overlords? Yep. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Caradron Overlords. Ah, I wish the Caradon Overlords were not so mercurial uh, and were not like such like mercenary focus. Like they're kind of pulling them away from that. Same thing for the um, um, Fire Slayers. But yeah, I, I, I hate how mercenary heavy they are. Creating your own chaos gods. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that's like a crazy thing. That's something that's like actively encouraged. Hidden Margaret Thatcher jokes. If Listen, if you're working with Brits, you're always going to have Hidden Margaret, Margaret Thatcher jokes. It's unavoidable because uh, she was kind of the devil from what I understand. Uh, early generic human armies. Yes, that is very true. The early humans did not have any fantasy elements. They were just basically historical things. Sigmar stole the Forge of Souls idea to make the Forge of Sigmar. Uh, so they're saying that Sigmar stole the demon's idea of the Forge of Souls to create the fucking, uh, oh God, what do they call it? The, um, the anvil of apotheosis. <laughs> That's, I like that. He's like, what if I did this, but better? Avalon Haas, good to see you on the stream. Uh, Enoch Slaves. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, pfft, uh who was that for? I want to say Araby had the Enoch Slaves. Pretty sure. Colchins are still canon? Yes. Colchin planes still have colchins. Colchins are like ostriches. They're like big, angry birds. Um, that skinks, the, there are skinks that ride on them um, into battle. They're never had a model. Um, they're very rarely talked about, but they do exist. Warhammer Siege. Uh, Warhammer Siege. Warhammer Siege was actually a series of books. Uh, there were multiple editions, but Warhammer Siege would provide you siege rules for Warhammer Fantasy, and they were fucking goofy. Um, a lot of the time, sometimes they were fun, um, but you often had to kind of like eh, insert your own stuff um, to uh, make them viable. Uh, they tended to be very basic. Um, they also sometimes included skirmish rules and the skirmish rules were fucking weird um, because it was like to kill someone, you couldn't just kill them. You had to like knock them down and then attack them when they were knocked down and that would eventually kill them. Um, Keter... Kerumich. I actually don't know this one. Kerumich. I don't know that one. Cavalcade of Nurgle. Uh, I'm assuming that's... I'm assuming the Cavalcade of Nurgle is referring to the Carnival of Chaos. Um, like Nurgle's uh, circuses, essentially. So in the lore, there's a well-established thing that Nurgle, being like this jolly god, um, has these cavalcades or these like little these wagon series of wagons that are kind of like a, um, a circus that travel around to like really rural parts of the empire and Bretonia and stuff and Kislev. 
and they bring like all these cool shows and stuff and all these like exotic creatures and cool spectacles and it's basically a front for not only uh introducing really disastrous diseases to those communities but potentially um looking for like new recruits and just it, it's basically a really clever way to spread nurgle's gifts among isolated populations and potentially uh convert or corrupt people lost downloadable rules from games workshops websites oh that's so painful because it's so fucking true Games Workshop had a really big thing in the early 2000s, uh, notably from like 2002 to 2006, um, where they were really fond of posting rules and lore and all this cool shit online. And uh, that's like where the entirety of the Storm of Chaos happened, was online. Um, and after a certain point, they decided to redo their website. And when they redid their website, they didn't archive anything. They just deleted everything. Like if they have it archived, they have it archived at headquarters and have never released it to the public. So there was a massive amount of really, really fun, exotic playable rules and campaigns and characters and lore that um, was lost forever. Um, sometimes they crop up every once in a while, like the really popular Nakai rules from the 2004 Shadows Over Albion campaign. That was a good example. That was posted officially on Games Workshop's website. Um, and now it only survives as like a PDF. Um, and it's one of the lucky ones. Do I think the demons of chaos will have a change to demons of Daniel? No, because Daniel is a make your own character. So I don't know how they do that. Um, leaving as the demons of chaos is unfortunate, but it's probably just the way it's going to stay. Amazons are more dangerous than lizardmen, but rig holds them back. Uh, so I hate this theory, but it's true. Um, so there was a, when uh, the Amazons were adapted in a white dwarf magazine to introduce what they would be like, Games Workshop basically came forward and introduced two theories for the Amazons. One theory was that the Amazons were um, Valkyries from Norska who when arriving in Lustria were basically told that hey y'all are women and we need y'all to stay safe so you're not allowed to fight anymore and you're gonna stay home and be wives and make babies because you know we're a fragile colony and we need more people and the Valkyries told them uh get fucked and made their own way and eventually discovered Amazon Island where they either joined a race that was already there or discovered a way to survive uh and uh learned from rig and acquired some like cool weapons and powers and stuff which i like that version the alternate version that was introduced by games workshop that i hate is that the amazons are a super ancient culture created by the old ones and they're a race of basically demigod immortal women who are not actually human they just kind of appear human and they have old one technology so they have 40k weapons literally um they have guns and uh they have the they have the the pew pew guns that the eldar have um uh, i think most of their weapons were eldar vaguely um but they have like eldar tech and for some reason still only exist on amazon island and don't like save the world for reasons <laughs> yeah i'm not a fan I, I hate that theory but that's where that comes from Witch Hunter tier. Oh my God, how many more of these are there? Oh my God, there's so many of these. All right, let's 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 work hard here. First generation dragon blood Shukagon lords were born from eggs. That is a terrifying idea. Um, but I mean, to be <laughs> to be fair, we do know for a fact that dragons come from eggs. Like all the nine dragon children and their mom and dad came from eggs. So, I mean, no, no, there's no way that's what happened. There's no way that's what happened because, because the dragon children took human forms to have those kids. So no, there's no way they were eggs. <laughs> no way. No, that was, it was, it was human. Full human. <laughs> you, you had me for a second. You had me for a second. Siberians. Oh, uh, that rings a bell, but I don't remember this. Old obscured and upon army list. Never look it up. Never look it up. Um, Nippon was so bad. 
It was so stupid and bad. Uh, Salon escaped to Warhammer 40k in the end times. Hilarious theory. Um, I honestly would have loved it if the Salon had suddenly showed up in 40k, but unfortunately, no, they just flew off to AOS instead. Swastika in first edition rulebook. Very likely. Um, probably because uh, back in uh, the 80s, uh, Warhammer was very fond of being super edgy and like literally like pulling up its thumb, thumbing its nose at everyone and being like, oh, look how edgy we are. It's the 80s and we're like resisting against authority and yada, yada, yada. So I have no doubt that they probably had like a Nazi call out, uh, though they were 100% not fond of the Nazis. Um, considering how much they like hated uh, a lot of those things. Uh, the advisor is the God Emperor. That is hilarious. I have never heard that theory that the advisor is the God Emperor. That is so funny, especially because he just gets like fucking like destroyed by Sartorial <laughs> at the end of the timeline. That's really funny. Unarchived Games Workshop sites. Yep, we talked about that earlier. Uh, Games Workshop used to have separate sites for different games. So like they used to have a separate site for more time. Um, that had like a lot of rules and stuff. That's gone. Do Longma appear from eggs? I have no idea. You'd have to look at like actual Longma um, mythology. Chaos Toilet. Uh, I don't know that one. Female orcs are purple. Uh, there used to be female orcs. Um, I remember reading a story that included them, um, but I do not recall. That must be like really, really old stuff. I've never heard that one. Zinch partially based on crystals from 1986's Labyrinth. <laughs> That's so stupid. Nurgle is protecting Shalya against Slanesh. I mean, isn't that basically... Oh, protecting Shalya. I mean, that's... Isn't that literally just the uh, 40k theory ripped and applied to fantasy? Didn't Nurgle get with Aisha to save Aisha from Slanesh in 40k? So this is literally just that theory, like, copy pasted. But, you know, changed to work for the end times reveal. Oh, yeah. Okay, Creo. That's a good point. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Eh, that's, eh, that's lazy. Slash steeds have long snouts for not safe for work reasons. Yeah, that's probably that it's not actually true. The reason they have the really long snouts uh, is due to allowing them to experience significantly stronger sensations um, and more just more sensations. Uh, but, that, you know, that also probably is not irrelevant. The last three Dark Lords of Nagash. The last three Dark Lords of Nagash. Are they talking about the Mortarks or are they talking about older lore of people actually called Dark Lords? Hello, Angry Angron. Angry Angron, you must be a very happy person considering that many that got just got revealed recently. Beast of Nurgle turns into a blight tree, which uh, produces plague drones Pokemon style. Uh, yeah, not horribly inaccurate. I don't believe that's a hundred percent accurate, but not horribly inaccurate. Wasn't there a Dark Lord and Dark Omen? Uh, maybe I don't know. I never played. I never played Dark Omen. I've never heard of a Dark Lord of Nagash. Uh, so I'm, I'm assuming that's just like old lore. Like those were the Mortarks before Games Workshop came up with the idea of Mortarks because they were like, oh, Dark Lords is a little too generic. We should probably call it something we can copyright. Oldest Warhammer editions recommended the use of minis from many different manufacturers. That's true. That's 100% true. Um, if you look at the older books um, and older editions, they would they very, very often uh, recommended minis from other companies. Um but, you know, that's because it wasn't their primary. They, they, life was just different then. Um, Warmaster Bretonian Army. Um, I'm not sure why this is a separate entry. I don't think I've ever seen the Bretonian Warmaster Army, to be honest. Ska Bloodtail survived into Age of Sigmar. I would not put it past him, though he definitely was killed by Queek. <laughs> Aztec gods were once canon. That is true. Um, before the old ones, uh, I think, effectively replaced them. That's very true. Pygmies and jungle halflings are basically the same thing. 
Uh, pygmies were a super fucking racist um, depiction of uh, a culture within Lustria. Um, it was it, one of the most racist models I've seen in my life. Um, just like, because uh, pygmies as a concept in and of itself is not racist, but the models themselves were awful. Um, they were they were the most stereotypical, nightmarish, uh, early cartoons interpretation of black people you could possibly imagine. Um, combined with diminutive jungle people, um, meme. Like, it was, it was awful. Islam was once canon Warhammer Fantasy. That's true. Go back early enough editions, uh, they did have more, like, actual historical religions and cultures. Um, they weren't even, like, remotely fantasy, uh, fantasized? I don't know what word I'm looking for. Lost in Prototype Citadel Miniatures. Uh, this is a really popular thing. Uh, a lot of people go around collecting or looking for Prototype Citadel Miniatures. They will often sell them places. Um, sometimes a, uh, people who like worked on the sculpts or just happen to have the sculpts will end up selling them on eBay or showing them off. Um, I've seen that happen multiple times. Probably the most famous version of a lost prototype Citadel miniature is the ass cannon, uh, the belovingly named ass cannon of the chaos dwarfs, which was a large demon that literally shot missiles or not missiles, but shot like energy beams out of its ass. Um, and it's, it's a very, very famous meme among the, uh, Chaos Dwarf community, um, that is still very vibrant these days. Uh, I did an interview with them. If you actually go to my YouTube channel and Google, like, Chaos Dwarfs, uh, if you go to the Chaos Dwarf Q&A and scroll down to the very end of the playlist, uh, I did an interview with the Chaos Dwarf community people. Um, they're very, very sweet, nice people, and, uh, they talk a lot about a lot of the prototype minis that they know about. Skaven used warp magic to turn living creatures into Skaven. Uh, that's not... I, I, I guess that's obscure, but that's, that is a thing that happens. Um, that's literally what the dreaded 13th spell is. Um, the dreaded, the dreaded third in the actual lore, what the dreaded 13th does is it's a super powerful spell only known to grace that when cast turns, whoever it's cast on into Skaven, what is Citadel miniatures? That's games workshop. So games workshops, like actual miniature line is Citadel miniatures. They're the same thing. Sigmar planned his ascension to godhood both times. That'd be so fucked up if that was true. Where he like genuinely planned it the first time. And then in the end times takes over Karl Franz's body and manipulates everything to turn into the god of heavens. Ooh, that would be, that would be spicy. That would be a spicy betrayal. Uh, Zahak lives in AOS. I don't remember who Zahak is. So I'm going to skip that. Uh, Famir and new Skaven types in AOS 3.0. Um, yeah, w well, so this theory, I don't know when this came out, but, um, this particular theory, so when they first announced the Cruel Boys for destruction, I, along with many, many people, thought they were actually Famir because they were like, look, it's a new destruction race that lives in the swamps and is super spooky and there's a lot of, like, fog and mist. And we knew the Famir had, the Famir were playable in AOS for a little while, the Forge World Famir. And the Famir in Age of Sigmar had lost the Chaos keyword and gained the Destruction keyword. So they were part of the Destruction faction. So a lot of us thought that the Famir were going to be the uh, new re reveal. Because like, oh, they're back in Warhammer Fantasy, so why not bring them back? Or uh, they're back in Total War, so why not bring them back now? And then it ended up being the Cruel Boys. I really like the Cruel Boys, uh, though I would, of course, like to see the Famir in AOS eventually. New Skaven types? Uh, that seems very likely. Um, I've heard rumors of a Skaven range refresh slash um, new units, though it's not for a hot while. Uh, Arrested Cultist was a decoy of Malekith? Oh, um, so in Malekith's storyline... Malekith has this whole escapade where he goes after the um he goes after the cult of pleasure in Ulthuan. Um and uh he, that's kind of like one of his big claims to fame is he ends up like purging it and end up finding out that his mother's behind it and all this stuff. So I'm assuming this is referring to that. Um but uh he um yeah, he did catch a number of people who told him like lots of little bits and pieces of information and he 
ultimately manipulated a lot of that information to try and accuse the Phoenix King um, of being a cultist and use that as an excuse to assassinate the Phoenix King, which literally nobody bought. Um, but uh, yeah. Orcs and orcs have active communication, but too stupid to do anything with it. I 100% believe that. <laughs> I, would, I would believe that so much uh, that the orcs of Warhammer Fantasy and 40k are able to talk to each other, but just can't do anything with the information. I would believe that in a heartbeat. Morathi use uh, Eltharin and Demolion like pawns. Uh, well, it's Morathi, so yes, 100%. Uh, Morathi uses everyone like pawns. Literally fucking everyone. I'm assuming these are characters from the Sundering trilogy. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Warhammer-esque orcs used by Citadel as minis for early editions of the Lord of the Rings strategy battle game. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's Citadel. Like, they're, 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 they cut corners. That's what they do. All right. Chaos Dwarf tier. Lumbria slash Lemuria. I don't know this one. I saw someone saying this earlier in chat. Does someone have a TLDR for me? I have never heard of Lumbria. Native American ex, uh, ex-spies live in Nagaroth. Yeah, they're called the Centaurs. We talked about that earlier. Nurgle is a Nergal copycat. Yes. Slon were based on d and Slod. Very, very likely. The Very, very likely. Thunder Lizards dinosaur tour army list. Yeah, so the Thunder Lizards... So Thunder Lizards are super giant um massive super dinosaurs and whenever they were represented on a tabletop game for like white dwarf or like you know games workshop would like do fun things with them um generally speaking they were always represented by someone going to the store and buying like a large dinosaur model for a child because when you would compare like a child's dinosaur toy to a warhammer mini the dinosaur toy was fucking huge so it did very nicely for uh <laughs> dinosaur toys Lumbria is on the Warhammer world map. It's east of Nippon, but only as text. Huh. I have never noticed that. Lumbria is supposed to be Warhammer Australia? I've always thought the Lost Isles of Elethys were Warhammer Australia. Hmm. I'll have to check that out. Dark Elves were a Jap in the United States. That's not a theory. Uh, that's 100% true. Oh, I guess it's just far down because may maybe people don't know that. Yes, the... The Dark Elves are 100% making fun of the United States. Giant floating fortresses, really big into slavery, uh, very debauched culture, um, separated from a more noble culture, and then fled west across the sea. Uh, yeah, no, they are absolutely based on America. Political allegories. Yep, game's full of them. Reaper War Game. Uh, so Reaper is another company that prints a lot of very similar suspiciously similar things to citadel uh, i think citadel hates reaper um but uh yeah reaper minis does a lot of stuff warhammer references in walakde mok i have no idea what the fuck that is never heard of it we'll have a chaos god of order in the future uh not true we actually uh whoever made this did not know we already have a chaos god of order um there actually is a chaos god of order in fantasy uh, his name is, oh man, I'm having a brain fart. Shit. What is his name? Sokan. Sokan is the, is, is the God of order at, well, essentially the chaos God of order. It's like a cartoon. Oh, okay. Lemuria is something conspiracy theorists and pseudobiologists believe in. Lemur, lemurs from Madagascar and India came from a continent supposed to be between the two. Ha! <laughs> okay. Um, the world is an experiment to the old ones. I mean, it was. It, it was an important experiment, but that's that's true. Tyranids were planned for fantasy before Age of Sigmar. What? Are they saying that Tyranids were going to come to fantasy, but then Age of Sigmar and the end times happened, so they ended up scrapping that plan? No, that's ridiculous. I think there's a chance we were going to get a bug race, but no, I don't think they ever would have given us Tyranids. That would have been cool, though. The last Total War Warhammer game will have an end times campaign back DLC. That'd be fun. I'd be cool with that. 
I, I think if the very last DLC for Total War Warhammer 3 was called The End Times, that would be cute and fun. I'd be cool with that. The Chaos Gods are godly representations of the aspects of the old ones taking up a different persona. Um, that is possible. Um, there actually was a very active... Like, there's in the lore, there's a very active suspicion by various individuals that the Chaos Gods are not are actually the old ones that when chaos like blew up and took over everything that the old ones did not die but they instead were corrupted by chaos and turned into the chaos gods so they're not actually manifestations of everybody's emotions but they are in fact just the old ones horribly corrupted we know that's not true um based on like a lot of other information but it scholars within the warhammer fantasy universe sometimes believe that um all right on to first generation slon tier skaven are based on nazis they literally have storm vermin and based on how incompetent games workshop likes to make them and all of their like nastiness and horrible shit yep and they're like racial purity and inheriting the world from lesser races and all that stuff. Yeah, no, they're very Nazi heavy. <laughs> Oak Rutney Diabell. Never heard of it. Not safe for work Beastman sculpts. Yep. Uh, I, those have definitely existed in the past. And, and there are weird people nowadays who still like to do that. And it's weird. Complaint letter from White Dwarf about scalies and furries. I've seen that. Uh, yes, it's, yeah, it's very, very funny. Um, I don't remember how long ago, it was a while ago, but I do recall this actually happening. Um, there were some hilarious arguments about that. First and second edition Warhammer Fantasy battle doesn't really count as warhammer true that's true even if you ask games workshop they will basically say to you that warhammer fantasy began in third began in third edition um they have an article talking about warhammer the old world where they say as much where they're basically like yeah no third edition is when the game actually started um first and second edition were just a completely different game okay we have to we have to wrap this up because i gotta go uh bakamono's revenge i have no idea what that is jessic play don't know what that is giant pygmies never heard of them Malal slash Malice returns and ca if Chaos loses. I mean, I guess. I mean, if he's the god of atheism, then I guess him appearing would kind of destroy everything. Uh, 40k's world is actually inside an Empire's Wizard's Crystal Ball. Yes, that's a hilarious theory and I think makes way more sense than the reverse. Is that the 40k universe is actually a magical artifact a wizard created for fun. Like he created a self-contained universe and keeps it in a crystal bar, uh, ball in the uh, College's Magic. Age of Sigmar was planned from the beginning. That is, that's a hilarious theory, but makes no fucking sense and absolutely does not work. Bakamono's Revenge is a reference to Jap Japan demons. Oh yeah, no. Uh, Nippon was, uh, Nippon was rough. Sotek is a secret chaos god. It's a popular theory. Uh, that's actually a very popular theory. Um, and I mean, it's because Sotek is a god and gods are innately from the ether, which means, I mean, technically all gods are chaos gods, but, um, uh yeah no it's it's definitely a very popular idea that sotek is actually just a chaos entity that has co-opted lizardman culture the great horned rat is really an aspect of all four of the chaos gods uh i've never heard it said all four i've heard it much more reliably that he's an aspect of zinch and nurgle though you could argue that he technically embodies elements of all four but to be fair, you could argue that every single chaos god embodies elements of all the other chaos gods. Like, that's kind of the whole thing about chaos. Um, that being said, the Great Horn Rat is in reality his own entity. Also, Sotek is not actually a chaos god. He, he is a god, um, but he's not a actual chaos god. Um, it's not a meme. Skaven actually aren't real. They're all minor demons. <laughs> that's really funny. That, that's the that's the council this is the council member tier so we're, we're at the deepest one of the deepest levels now um that's hilarious uh that skaven are just demons um unfortunately not true because they leave corpses um they're in real life there are people who worship the chaos gods 
that's a really scary thought but i would not put it past humanity uh there are plenty of people out there in the world who unfortunately are just really misguided or make really poor decisions and yada 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 and i would not be shocked at all to know there's someone out there that is so cringy um that they genuinely worship chaos gods the great horned rat was planned to be the great beast um i've heard about the great beast theory uh i've never heard of it as being um a uh turning into the great horned rat but i mean i i can see the idea um but i i believe the great beast was originally going to be beastman related um but uh i've never heard that particular theory i don't see much evidence for it one of the great horned rats is a manifestation of nurgle that got out of hand and acquired sentience well, okay, so the most popular theory is that um, is that Zinch created the Great Horned Rat and then Nurgle either intentionally or accidentally created a rival sentience to the Great Horned Rat being through Clan Pestilence, which has caused multiple civil wars in Skavendom. And in Age of Sigmar has actually become a significant thing where the Great Horn Rat has actually shattered into a bunch of different personalities. And all of those personalities, which are called godheads, are at war with each other. Um, and trying to, like, consume one another to become the one true Great Horn Rat. So, maybe not as crazy as it sounds. Clan Mulder actually pray to a Great Horn Rat manifestation of Zinch. Uh, that would certainly be possible. Um, of the four great clans, if you had to, like uh assign them each um a role um personally i would say clan scryer worships more zinch than clan molder does i mean molder does work a lot with mutation but that's really the only thing they have in common with zinch like they don't do anything with magic um and zinch while zinch is the god of mutation that is not his biggest aspect because mutation is so universal to chaos um like Honestly, I think calling Zinch the god of... Because, you know, he's the god of change. Um, but uh, ultimately, like, mutation is kind of one of his least important aspects. Um, it's just kind of one of those, like, oh, like, everybody needs him in order for chaos to exist. But once again, you can say that about all of the gods. Um, or all the the big four. Uh, so, yeah, that that one's... that That's a pretty weak theory, in my opinion. Broodmother's play, Parade to Slanesh. That is... That's disturbing to think about. Uh, brood mothers are female Skaven. Um, when female Skaven are born, they are taken immediately uh, and given over to clans as property. And then they are force fed massive amounts of growth hormones and other mutagenic elixirs that turn them into these giant monstrosities that give birth to children endlessly. And they are actually quite large. Um, they're roughly the size of a rat ogre, if not a little bigger. Um, and they actually can be quite dangerous um, if you're not careful. Um, like, they're not super capable of defending themselves, but they can. Um, uh, if, if forced to, they can be very, very deadly. Um, but they are, like, always completely drugged out of their minds um, and are very, very rarely aware of their surroundings unless something like directly attacks them or threatens them um that being said uh, i don't think they pray to anything because i don't think they're like there if you know what i mean um they're more like wild animals uh skaven warrior clans pray to corn in secret yeah wouldn't put it past them um I, I would not be shocked at all to hear that there's a warrior clan out there that prays to corn though of course skaven don't in fantasy, Skaven only pray to the Great Horned Rat. In Age of Sigmar, they've actually started to mix it up a little bit. Um, there have been Skaven who have been worshipping other gods, which is really funny. Elspeth Von Draken is a lost dragon child. That's so stupid. That what is the what is the basis for this theory? Number one, is, is it because her name is last name is Draken? So they're like, oh, Elspeth Von Draken, that, that kind of is like Elspeth the Dragon, right? And like she rides on a dragon, so therefore she is a dragon. Like that is the laziest fucking theory I've ever seen in my life. Um, that's so stupid. It's so stupid. Oh, okay, it's your theory. Okay, so it's meant to mock me, not to actually be a theory. All right, Malal secretly helped Nagash to godhood to kill chaos. That's actually a really interesting theory. Um, Nagash 
Nagash is honestly the ultimate embodiment of atheism and fantasy. Like, Nagash is one of the only entities who has gone... Well, that's not true. Archaon is also up there. But Nagash is one of the, well, old entities who is completely and utterly obsessed with the idea of killing all the gods. Um, and basically, like, breaking them. Um, that's interesting. Um, I don't think that's true. Uh, and I think Nagash is entirely a self-made man. Um, working on the backs of giants, thanks to the uh, Mortuary Cult. But... That is interesting. Um, the hooded figure from Kavzar is the estranged son of the dwarven ancestor god Gazul named Skarvor. Um, oh my god, that would be so fucked up. That would be so fucked up if it was... If, so Gazul is the dwarven ancestor god of death um, and like the afterlife. And Skavor, uh, his estranged son, also an ancestor god, um, or at least a, or at least a, uh, an ancestor, um, revered ancestor. Uh, <laughs> that would be so stupid. Um, I no, because we know it was a man. Like he he was man shaped, so it couldn't have been a dwarf. Because those people knew what dwarfs were. The people of Kasvar, their city, their capital city, literally was connected to a dwarf hold. They would have, they would have, they would have known, um, if, if it was a dwarf and probably would have made a comment on it. That is a crazy theory. I'm, I'm pretty sure the hidden figure was the horned rat himself, um, manifesting in the city. And the deep ones, obviously the deep ones. Uh, if you don't know about the deep ones, I don't know how you're in this channel. You've been living under a rock. Where have you been? Uh, I have a whole bunch of videos on the deep ones. I have two videos on my channel about the deep ones. Um... And I love them. And they will be playable. God damn it. All right. I got to go. Um, this was meant to waste time. And it wasted a shitload of time. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you I hope you enjoyed that breakdown of the Warhammer Fantasy Iceberg. Um, I, I will upload it to YouTube. I promise I'll upload it to YouTube. Uh, 